After the Mazda MX-5 made small sports cars trendy again in the 1990s, everyone was in on the action, from Fiat to MG to Toyota and BMW. The Z3 took the basis of an E30 and E36 3 Series, combined it with this retro roadster style to create a fantastic little sports car that was fun and surprisingly affordable for a BMW. These days it remains a great cheap weight into a rear wheel drive convertible sports car, but given that the earliest ones are almost 30 years old now, it still pays to look carefully. So here's everything that you need to look for if you want to buy yourself a BMW Z3. But first, our friends at Lancaster Insurance are running monthly giveaways. You can win all sorts, from experience days to tools, restaurant vouchers and tech. So click the link below at the end of the video to enter their latest competition. Unlike the Mazda MX-5, the Z3 seems remarkably good at staving off rust. These cars do rot, but nowhere near as badly as the little Mazda. The main area to look on Z3s is the sills. Inner and outers have a good look on the outside of the car visually, and then get on the ground, look underneath, and as ever, go all the way along, knock on it, make sure it sounds like good solid metal all the way along. And a good sign is if it's got its original factory rust proofing on there, which means it probably hasn't had any repairs. If the sills on your Z3 are rotten though, it's not the end of the world because you could buy a new sill repair panel from BMW themselves for about 200 quid. If you're handy with the welder, it's a DIY job. And if you're not, it's not the most expensive job to farm out. So rotten sills needn't be terminal on the Z3 unless your car's got a lot of other issues with it. Another issue is these front wheels. Wings. Yes, this little panel here. These can rot, particularly obviously with stone chips and road grime thrown up by the front wheels onto them. But again, you can buy these panels secondhand. They are a bolt off panel. Just lift the bonnet, you can pretty much see all the bolts you need to remove it. You can change this over and smarten your car up nicely. What's more, if you've got a common color, you can probably buy a secondhand one in the right color so you don't even need to paint it. Check the condition of the front and rear wings, particularly on the later wide body cars. Make sure it's straight all the way down and preferably not too full of filler. The mirrors have got aluminium mounts in them which corrode over time, and when they do, they can break. The mirrors can fall off or just end up really wobbly. You can buy second-hand ones for about 100 quid. There are also new plastic replacements available, which whilst they are more brittle, of course, they don't suffer from the aluminium corrosion issues of the factory ones. Even on the tidiest Z3s, like this example here, these cars are low with a low nose, and that means they're pretty prone to getting stone chips, particularly if they're driven on motorways. Have a good look for any signs of stone chips here and any touch-up paint. It's not the end of the world, but if you do need to get this bonnet repainted, this is a big panel, and it could also be quite expensive to get it repainted depending on what colour your car is. The headlights, these are plastic lenses and they can cloud up as is pretty common for most 90s plastic headlights. It's not the end of the world because you can buy a restoration kit, buff them back up and restore them, or if yours are really bad or cracked, you can buy secondhand ones for between 40 and 60 quid each. But again, it's worth checking the condition of used units. Finally, this is a low car at the front and that means it's entirely possible if it's been driven onto a sloped driveway or into a car park with big speed bumps that the nose might have scuffed and scraped. So feel along here, have a good look, see if the paint is at all damaged and again look for any signs of cracking in the plastic bumper. The Z3 was available with both a manual and power operated folding fabric roof. Now the power operated roof cars they do command more of a premium on the used market and it is a nice luxury to have but to be brutally honest you can put these roofs up and down from the driver's seat and it's no quicker to use the power roof they're not the fastest thing in the world. Whether you're going for a power roof or a manual one though you want to check all the usual things look at the condition of the cloth look for any creases or tears or rips in it check the condition of the back window make sure that's not split and not too milky so you can actually see out of the thing and if you do need to replace your roof a second hand one can be bought for between 250 and 450 pounds but if you're going for a really nice example you want a brand new hood you can buy one for between 550 pounds and up to a thousand pounds depending on what material it's made out of and how bespoke you want to go but either way if you are diy inclined you can change a z3 soft top on your own you just need someone to help you lift the old one off and the new one on but it's only a few hours work and it's a surprisingly satisfying and easy way to smarten your car up. Finally, these rubber seals that run along the top over your head, they will need lubricating over time, otherwise they will dry out, they will start to crack, they will let water in. Vaseline, believe it or not, is the recommended way to do it. So pop into your local pharmacy, grab a pot of that for a few quid, just make sure that every year you lubricate these and make sure they're soft. The Z3 came with a wide variety of engines, so we'll start with the four pots. The original 1.9 litre twin cam M44 can suffer head gasket failure if it's run low on coolant. 
but it's not terminal or too tricky to fix if you're DIY inclined. The exhaust manifolds can blow from the flange, but that's easily welded up or replaced. And finally, water pump failure, which can lead to the aforementioned HGF, isn't uncommon. A new one though is only around 20 quid. The M43 single cam, badged 1.8, can experience running issues, almost always caused by faulty crank or cam position sensors or a failed idle air control valve. The oil filter housing can leak, a symptom of a failed gasket, and both foreparts can suffer from the plastic coolant elbow cracking, but again that's another cheaply rectified issue. The M52 2.0-litre and 2.8-litre 6-pots had Nicosil liners until March 1998. Most were replaced under warranty, so check for a steel tab and 10mm bolt under the starter motor to confirm that yours has been. If not though, it's not too much of an issue these days. Just avoid short journeys and think about using premium petrol. The M52 got BMW's Vanos variable valve timing from September 98. Poor performance, particularly in the upper echelons of the rev range, point to a worn pump, likely with failed seals. Check for obvious oil leaks on the Vanos unit and the cam cover, and if yours is leaking, specialists exist to rebuild it for you. The M54 2.2 and 3 litre six cylinder engines have tin piston rings and they're known to use oil, so make sure that you're checking the level weekly at a minimum. The crankcase ventilation pipes are plastic and by now they'll likely be cracked. Thankfully a new set will cost you about 30 quid. If your six pot engine suffers head gasket failure, it's probably a write off. The threads in the alloy block stretch when the head bolts are tightened down, so the block is effectively a single use item. Unless it's criminally cheap, walk away from any six cylinder Z3 with any signs of head gasket failure. As for gearboxes, the 1.8, 1.9 and 2 litre all use the Getrag 250G 5 speed, a durable unit with a nice shift feel. Replacing the bushes on higher mileage examples will tighten it up nicely. The 6 pots meanwhile come with either the ZF 310 or 320Z manual or the 5 speed automatic. Both units are solid, dependable and rarely give any trouble. The 4 speed GM automatic meanwhile is definitely best avoided unless you simply can't can't drive a manual. It's slow, it often finds itself in the wrong gear, and it requires regular fluid changes. Avoid. On all Z3s bar the 6 pots, the differential can start to whine on higher mileage cars. It's nothing to worry about, but if it does bother you, a used replacement is about 100 quid. The Z3 suspension is a combination of E30 and E36, and it creates a roadster that can do comfort and corners admirably. Tired front dampers will give the car a soft feeling front end, and the front wishbones can rot out over time. Luckily the former is around 65 quid to replace, and the latter is just 40. Ball joints require a specialist tool to separate and replace, as do the rear axle beam bushes, which when tired can cause rear end clonking and soft feeling over bumps. Both will require a specialist to fix though, so they may not be cheap. If you think your steering rack's failing, either through clonking feel or just leaking fluid, here's a quick tip. A Z3 rack will set you back around 200 quid, whereas a purple tag E46 rack, which is a straight swap, is only around 130 pounds, and it actually offers more steering lock than the standard Z3 one. The Z3's brakes are well up to the job, regardless of the power plant, and ABS warning lights, the only issue you're likely to encounter, are likely rectified by replacing a 12 pound sensor. Finally, the handbrake on Z3s is notoriously bad. Adjust yours regularly, only use genuine BMW handbrake shoes, and if you are parking the car on a hill, we'd advise that you leave it in gear. If you're familiar with 90s BMWs, the Z3 cabin will be nothing out of the ordinary to you. There's a lot of parts bin pieces from other cars in BMW's range, and that's no bad thing. Everything tends to last well, and it does survive the years, even on high mileage examples. A common issue with Z3s like the E36 is when the ignition barrel doesn't actually click in place, and it will just spin, which means you can't start the car. It sounds slightly bodgy, but a very common fix to do this is take the cowling off of the ignition barrel, just put a very small self-tapper through it to hold it in place, double check that it does work before you put 
put the cowling back together and you're probably pretty much solved. Alarms and immobilizers cause havoc with the Z3 central locking. Even BMW's own system is known to lock and unlock doors at random and set the alarm off. So it's generally not a bad idea to have any alarm and immobilizer on a Z3 removed. Even the BMW factory system have a good brand new aftermarket one installed if you must for your insurance and so on, but otherwise really don't put yourself through the hassle. The central brake light on the boot lead can fall apart over time. It's a plastic lens, it gets brittle. Not the end of the world though, a brand new one is just 40 quid and easy to change. Inside, the bushes on the seat runners can wear out and when they do, you get the infamous Z3 seat rot. You can get a whole new bushing kit for a Z3 seat for just 11 quid. Pull the seat out with just four bolts, don't forget the airbag plug, and then you can do it at home yourself and it means you don't have to buy new seats. If you do want new seats though, because you either don't like the look of the cloth ones or yours are worn out, then replacement second-hand leather seats for a Z3 are a great option. A good second-hand pair can be bought for between three and 400 quid, and it's a great little upgrade. If your car's got air conditioning on it, it's not the best system in the world. It doesn't blow very strong. If you do want your aircon to work, it's derived from the E36 Compact, and that means the parts are easy and cheap to buy if you do want your aircon to work, but to be honest, it's a convertible. If you're hot, put the roof down, put the windows down, and just drive quickly. Finally, because it is a convertible, Convertible, you want to be checking for any signs of water ingress. Have a look at all the door seals and so on, make sure they're not split and letting water in. And as soon as you get in the car with the roof up, just smell. Does it smell damp and musty? Are there any stains on the seats or the floor mats? Pull those up and have a look at the carpets because as with any other convertible, a leaking Z3 is not a good thing and it's just not fun to have to sort it out. You want to get the roof down and be enjoying it. One of the best things about the Z3 is it remains absolutely affordable. Whereas Mark 1 MX-5s are skyrocketing past £5,000 for a good one now, you can get into a four-cylinder Z3 from around a thousand quid at the moment. It is going to be a bit of a project, it'll have a few rough edges, and as ever when buying at the bottom end, it's worth weighing up the financial viability of it. If it needs things like a new roof and lots of mechanical work, it might be better off in the long run buying a slightly better car for a little bit more money and spending less on repairs. If you fancy a tidier four-pot though, up your budget from around two to three and a half thousand pounds. And for that, you'll get the nicest four cylinder cars on the market. They'll be facelift. Your choice of colors and specs, a really nice car. Or if you must have a six pot in your Z3, three to three and a half thousand pounds is where you're gonna start looking. It's gonna have over a hundred thousand miles. It might have a few jobs that need doing, and it might have the odd modification on it that isn't to your taste. But if you want a six pot rear wheel drive BMW, a Z3 for around three grand is one of the cheapest entry points at the moment, and they make great cars. For a tidier six cylinder, start your search at around four £4,000 upwards. For that money, you can get into a facelift wide body and you can start to look at some of the 2.8 and 3 litre cars. Push that upwards north of around £6,000 though, and you can have the best six cylinder Z3s on the market with your choice of colour, specification, mileage. But if even the best 3 litre Z3 won't do it for you, you'll be wanting the monstrous Z3M. If you want one of those, you'll need to almost triple your budget to around £15,000 starting price for a Z3M Roadster. For that money, it is going to be higher on the mileage, and again, it might have some jobs that need doing, but a lot of the parts for a Z3M are actually the same as a normal Z3, so it won't be too expensive to bring one up. If you want the iconic bread van Z3M coupe, though, they are a highly priced collector's item these days, and you'll need to double your budget to around £30,000 for a Z3M coupe, assuming you can find one for sale. They are very rare cars. But from the bottom of the rung, £1,000 four-cylinder project cars to that top of the tree, £30,000 M coupe. The Z3 makes a fantastic choice as a modern classic sports car. They look great, they're fun to drive, practical, reliable, and they've got that cheeky, fizzy character that a lot of BMWs are missing. What's more, with MX-5 prices going well north of five grand for a good one now, the Z3 remains a bargain. So I'd say jump on them now. Seriously, go and do it. Go and buy one. This video is proudly sponsored by Lancaster Insurance. Give them a call on 01480 400 889 for an insurance quote on your classic car. And don't forget to click the link below to enter their latest competition.